In this episode, I want to talk about going to camp. Does going to camp help student athletes with the recruiting process? Hello, once again, this is Al Woods of Woods Recruiting, and I want to talk about camp. We have a lot of camps that go on during the summer months, and do they actually help student athletes get recruited for college? In my opinion, they don't. And here's why. You say, let's say you go to a camp and there's 300 players there at the camp. It's going to be almost impossible for a coach to spend actual time with you, individual attention, you know, from a college coach on their campus. I mean, you might get lucky, but with that many players, it's going to be kind of hard. So what a lot of parents may do is they'll try that camp, and then maybe they will go to a different camp, thinking that, okay, well, we're going to try our luck at this camp, but then you're at another one, and maybe there's 325 players at this camp. Wherever you go, there's going to be two, three, four hundred 400 players at the camp, depending on the size of the school. And all the players are also thinking the same thing, that if we go to camp, we're going to be seen by that coach who's going to work with us for X amount of days, and we may have a chance of catching their attention and them wanting to recruit us. And in reality, they're really not interested in you. By the time you get to camp, They've already got 25, 30 players that they're already interested in who are not even attendees of the camp. They already know who they want to recruit. They already know who they are targeting. On their recruiting board, they have a strong list of student athletes they're looking to get. Then they have a, a strong number two list and probably a number three, four, and five list. And I bet your name is not on that list. But you still go to camp anyway. And it is the same for, for baseball camp, for, for basketball camp, it's the same scenario. Now, I don't want to upset any college coaches because how they earn money for their athletic program is by having camps. But the other value, there is value to going to camps. And the value is you are actually working on your athletic ability. You're actually getting better. I mean, isn't that what it's about when you go to camp? Is to get better, to get better athletically. You want to get better. You know, you can't get better sitting at home doing nothing. You can't redefine your skills, your athletic skills. You know, how, how good you are, your skills. You can perfect your skills. You can perfect your talent. You're actually practicing under the instruction of college coaches who know how to coach. So they're going to coach you up on, on different techniques to help you get better for your season. So use that for your season, for your high school football or basketball season or whatever sport you play. Use what you learn to get better. But it, it's going to come down to, when it comes to recruiting, networking with college coaches and being able to network with college coaches a lot of times. Not just, hey, coach, I was at your camp back in July. You know, they're not going to know who you are. You might be the 1,000th player who attended their camps over the summer. But... It does happen, though. It does happen where a player does capture the attention of a college coach at a camp, but the odds are pretty slim. So a lot of families are, are, are thinking about camp as a tool for recruiting, as a way to get direct access to college coaches. But I'm here to tell you it's a different strategy, a different strategy you're going to need. You're going to need to develop relationships with college coaches over a long period of time so that they will take you seriously, 
read your information, respond back to your information, and then where you can continue to send information knowing that your information will be read and that someone will reply back to you on what they have read or what they have seen or whatever the case may be. But that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of recruiting. Think about recruiting for a moment. Really think about it when you have several million student athletes playing a sport. Let's just say basketball, since that's what I play. You got several million seniors who are looking to get recruited and get into hundreds of college programs. So somewhere, some, somewhere that is not going to add up. So some student athlete is not going to get into college and it's going to be because they either are not talented enough, number one, so then you shouldn't even be bothered with it, go do something else. Number two, they don't have the grades. That's a big one. You got a lot of talented kids out there, but they don't have the grades. And that is still to this day is a big, big issue. Why? Why, when you already know that if you don't have the grades, you're not getting into college. And so that's a big, big problem, and that will rule out millions of athletes right there. They'll try junior college, or they might get lucky and get into an NAIA school. But it's not going to be what they like, it's not going to be what they want, and then they're going to end up transferring. So now they're at their second college, and now maybe something there doesn't go right. So what ends up happening is that you play musical chairs with college programs, jumping from one program to another, trying to find the perfect fit, the right scenario. But had you taken care, taken care of your business in high school academically, you wouldn't be in this musical chair situation with college programs. So those are some of the big factors. The, the other one I would think would be just being overlooked. You know, you've got, there's this dozens of scenarios. I'll use basketball for an example, where you got two players who are both six foot six, same height, same weight, same grades, different high schools, one could end up getting a scholarship and the other could end up being totally invisible to college programs. Identical players, identical, different high schools, same height, same weight, same grades, but end up one getting a scholarship and one is not. That happens all the time where the player is overlooked. So you may say, well, maybe if the player played at a more prominent high school, I don't think that's a factor anymore, people. Parents, especially need to hear this. I don't think, in my opinion, playing at a prominent high school is a factor. The reason is there's so much club sports. AAU, Okay, AAU, if you're on a good AAU team and you're in tournaments, you're going to be seen by college coaches. So to say that might have been the way it was 30, 35 years ago that you had to be at a prominent school because AAU wasn't as big as it, as it was. It's, it's big now. You know, it's a freight train out of control. So those are some of the factors that go into recruiting. And I know parents are trying to do everything in their power to help their sons and daughters get exposure. Part of the problem with the parents is that they're using old, broken down recruiting strategies and techniques that have been outdated for a very long time. But it's like something that gets passed down from generation to generation and it doesn't change. 
So that's what happens sometimes in recruiting. Parents will hear or believe a particular strategy and then they'll use it. And then some other parent will use it, whatever strategy that is, and that's just how it is. So, I know it's it's important to just understand how to get your name in front of college coaches with a lot of information that's valuable, that's relevant, that's useful, that's helpful, and target the appropriate college programs. That's another one that's a problem for student athletes and their parents. They are oftentimes targeting the wrong college programs. So what I mean is you want to go to all the Division I programs. You're looking D1. You're looking at D1 schools. You're saying, I want to go Division I and nothing else matters to me. And that's where I want to go. But the th here's the thing. If they're not already recruiting you, chances are you're more than likely are not going to the Division I level. You might get lucky, keyword, might, with a small Division I program, a small, think of a small D1 program, something small. You might get lucky and, and get the attention of something on that level. But you need to select college programs based on what you can do athletically. Who have you competed against? And be realistic. Can you compete? Can you hold your own against the top talent on the club circuit? So now I'm off of basketball. On the club circuit, every high school sport has a club component. There's club soccer. There's baseball, seven-on-seven -seven football, all of that. There's a club component, junior Olympic volleyball. Can you compete? Are you holding your own against the top talent? If you're not, then there's your answer. Your answer is you cannot compete at that level. I mean, let's just be real. I mean, if you're going to contact Division I schools and you're not a Division I talent, you're just wasting everybody's time. Let's be real. Look for an opportunity. Now, now think about this, too. I want to mention this, and then we're going to wrap up this podcast. But... You get a lot of players who, who think about D1 every day, who dream about it, who that's, they, they, they have this great passion that they want to play at that level. And then when they get there, they realize it is an incredible amount of work. It's going to be a huge, and I mean huge, sacrifice on your time. And so a lot of those athletes will get to that level and then they can't cut it. They can't compete. They can't keep up. Now think about this, and then we'll close. Think about this. When all of those players are in college, they were probably the best player on their high school team. And so now they're all at this college. So you got all of these players who were the best. Something's not going to work out. The, 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 the level of competition is going to be a lot higher, stronger, faster than you were used to. So there's a lot of players who can't, who can't do it. You know, when I was in college, there were several players who could not do it. They were doing it in practice. When the season started, they were like a deer in headlights. So my point is, find a college program where you're going to go to college, get an education, because that's why you're in college. And then go somewhere where you can play for the next four years. This is Al Woods. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below if you agree or disagree with any of the points I made here in this podcast. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let's debate the point in the comment section below. Share us on Facebook and Twitter and all of that good stuff. That would be very helpful. 
to spread the word about what I'm talking about in this podcast. This is Al Woods of Woods Recruiting. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you again real soon.